Eric Darling here, uh, representing Darling Data, and uh, this video is going to be continuing to look at what you can see about queries that are running in SP underscore pressure detector. Now, uh, we're going to sort of replay some of the demos that we looked at for the CPU pressure and the memory pressure stuff. Because one set, of, uh, I mean, well, I guess technically two sets of results that I didn't really explore much are uh, information about the queries that are running. Well, things are going poorly. So <coughs> we're going to do that. We're going to have fun. I have a lot of fun. Um, and then we're going to eat some lunch because it is getting close to that time. And uh, I don't know, really like to... Uh, I, I, my balanced breakfast was th either three or four uh, double shots of espresso. So um, my balanced lunch is probably going to have to be chicken or something. <laughs> A live chicken. A whole live chicken. Not, not, de not deboned, not defeathered. I'm just going to rip into it. Chupacabra. So anyway, uh, this video is sponsored by New York City Tap Water. Mmm. It's not radioactive yet. <laughs> what else can you say? All right. So, important stuff. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to use just this setup. We don't need to do anything else on this one. Uh, cleared out weight stats. We don't have to worry about that. Let's make sure this is highlighted. So future... Executions do not also clear out weight stats, even though they're not really important for this for this part. Uh, you know, whatever. We're going to find various ways to enjoy ourselves. All right. So let's kick off uh, that CPU pressure demo. And let's unhighlight that. Let's be really counterproductive right off the bat. And <coughs> we're going to give this a few runs just to kind of uh, let things warm up a little bit. And, you know, we're going to see the weight stats pile up for, like, you know, CPU-related stuff, which is, you know, about what you'd, you'd expect for a CPU pressure demo. But let's scroll down a little bit here. And let's look at this section. So this section will uh, tell you kind of more specifically about CPU-related stuff uh, on a server. And one thing that I want to show you is uh, this, these two columns over here. So uh, under intense enough CPU pressure, I just want to go back a little bit. So this section up here will only show you queries that are asking for a memory grant. Uh, if queries are not asking for a memory grant, they will not show up here. There's a, there are some differences in the results, and you know you can use the at what to check parameter to look at CPU or memory or both or you know whatever. But as we scroll down through here, under significant enough CPU pressure, notice that we have these queries <coughs> that all of a sudden uh, this is all the same query running. This is my system, and there are so many of these things it cannot possibly be terribly contaminated by other stuff. And we can scroll back over to the query text to see this is all the select, the select count query that I'm executing, right? And we have some queries that under significant enough CPU pressure, like where we're hitting thread pool weights, right, for a long period of time in here, uh, the notice the DOP suddenly drops off. All right, I'm going to cancel this just so it, sometimes this one, too, uh, well, you know, sometimes it takes a little while to kill. Other times it's just immediate. So that's, that's nice. Worked, worked quickly while recording. That's always a, always a welcome, always a welcome surprise. So if you remember the video that I posted uh, talking about how bad of a feature DOP feedback is in SQL Server 2022, um, now in preview in Azure, <laughs> The number of micro, the number of Microsoft <laughs> features for SQL Server 2022 that are in preview <laughs> as of RTM, sort of astounding. You know, micro, like uh, Microsoft's like, ah, we'll just preview and prod. Why not? Test that for us. We're afraid. 
it's a little it's a little amusing but uh one of the one of my main one of my main beefs one of my main grievances with the dop feedback feature is that uh it'll it'll downgrade and downgrade and downgrade uh, but it will never go to dop one and here we have sql server on its own under memory pressure uh, downgrading a whole mess of queries from DOP8 to DOP1 because we did not have significant enough CPU resources. And if we scroll over back this way, and I'm just going to highlight this bottom row because we know this is DOP1, and we can make a reasonable assumption that this is the select count query that we're running from uh, SQL query stress. If we look at the query plan for it, SQL, Ser SQL Server is still showing a fully parallel execution plan for this query, even though <coughs> at runtime it is only getting one thread. So, DOP feedback people at Microsoft, you can do it. You can make it happen. You can do something smart with this feature. I don't know why I'm whispering. This isn't a secret. The feature stinks. Uh, so there's that. <clears throat> All right, cool. So other stuff we can see about uh, queries executing in here. Uh, you know, session ID, database name, how long they've been running for, query text, query plan. Uh, you can get some statement offset and whatnot from this just in case it's part of a you know larger batch or whatever. Uh, I like to give you the plan handle in case you want to go look stuff up. Uh, you get the status if it's being blocked. Uh, any you know important weights for these? You see some of the um, CX consumer weights up here. These queries run for 20 seconds, and they're just pounding CPU. So, um, you know that's that's fine. Uh, <coughs> you know other other interesting stuff: uh, CPU time, lapse time, uh, reads, writes, memory, isolation level. And of course, DOP in parallel worker count. So, uh, pretty good set of uh, information there if you want to uh, get information about queries that are uh, using a bunch of CPU. Now, let's switch over a little bit and let's look at the uh, memory pressure demo. It seems like a reasonable thing to get to. And let's. Uh, Let's execute this and let's run SP pressure detector. Let's give this a couple few seconds to warm up. We'll know that um, we'll know that things are starting to warm up when we start to see uh, resource semaphore weights show up in here, right? That's when we know things are getting good. Uh, notice from the last demo, we do have uh, uh, the thread pool weights piling up here, right? We have about eight and a half seconds per weight not a good sign right cpu pressure sign but now let's uh scroll down and let's stop a little bit earlier than before and let's look at the section that gives you queries that are asking for a memory grant again no memory grant you don't show up here this thing specifically looks for stuff that are these queries that are asking for memory grants uh, i didn't want to mix the two because i kind of show you different things from each right so session id database name how long it's been running query text query plan yada 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 where these where these differ <coughs> is uh, these show you queries that have, well, when they requested memory, uh, when they were granted memory, how much memory they requested, uh, how much uh, was actually granted of that request. Uh, of course, the ideal memory. So the ideal memory was way higher than what was granted. Uh, the required memory. So like um, if you end up with a... Uh, sorry, I'm looking in the wrong section. So if you scroll down a little bit and you look in this section and uh, you see stuff in this forced grant count row, uh, this is the required memory. So if you have a query that gets forced to run with a lower memory grant, that's where you'll see that. Uh, I'm just going to kill this off because boy, oh boy, is my, are my computer fans tired. Uh, you'll see how much memory of the grant was used. I should maybe rearrange these columns a little bit so they're a little more, a little more lined up with things. I was, I actually, you know, I, I was going to make a couple notes here, mental notes. Uh, I would like to have a date diff on the request and grant time to see if there was uh, there was any significant uh, delay in a query asking for a grant and getting for a, getting a grant. That'd be nice, right? 
Uh, I should probably put that a uh, probably put a difference between. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll figure some stuff out. I'm a difference between like used and requested, or used and granted. That seems like a good idea. So if you scroll over a little bit further, <coughs> uh, you'll see some information about, so like if a query got a memory grant, these will be null. If a query is waiting for a memory grant, these will not be null. And you'll see which QID they're in, the wait order of the queries, zero based counting, how nice. You'll see if a query is the next candidate, which, you know, could change from Q to Q. And then uh, how long the query has been waiting for a memory grant, which, I don't know, maybe that'd be interesting to factor into the, uh, the, the, the wait, waiting for a grant equation, wouldn't it? I think so. So we got that. And then we see some of the, the queries that are up there running that got their grants, because this stuff is null, waiting on CX consumer, parallel queries, yeehaw. Uh, but the queries that are waiting are all waiting on resource semaphore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some other <coughs> information that looks a little bit like below, the DOP, reserve work account, use work account. So there's sort of like a mix of information in here. But again, there's enough different that I didn't want to sort of pollute one result set with data from another because we would end up with a scroll bar that cuts off an arm and a hand from... <laughs> everything it would not be fun or enjoyable so uh that's that there now do you always have to look at both of these no but uh as a whole these results can give you a whole lot of great information about the various types of pressure that uh SQL Server can be under, right? CPU and memory, those are the most common. Um, and you can also see some good information about the queries that might be causing that. Um, you know, these, the plan handles are good things to copy off for queries, so you can go do some digging later. Of course, the query plans and query text are good things to dig into there. But you can get more information via the plan handle from various sources. Uh, <coughs> sort of calling back to another video about SP underscore quickie store, you can use that plan handle <coughs> Uh, to look up queries there. So, uh, all fun stuff in there. And uh, I don't know, I think I think that's about it for that. There was just those two results that I wanted to go over because uh, the other videos about uh, CPU and memory pressure specifically cover the rest of the results. And those were about 20 minutes each, and this one's going to be about 15 minutes. So you might get some pretty good understanding of why I didn't mix everything in because then you would have been sitting around for 45 minutes watching me on YouTube double or triple speed where I would have sounded like a one of those sped up soul samples trying to explain CPU and memory pressure to you and that that is not a good not good for my voice my voice does not do well with with the speed up cool so Again, SP underscore pressure detector might be the finest store procedure ever written. Uh, I do encourage you to look at the, uh, the source code. Behold its majesty. Behold its elegance. And when, once you do, I think you'll understand why Darling Data is indeed the hottest, hippest, most fire SQL Server consultancy on planet Earth. And again, we'll get the lawyers out if you disagree. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed yourselves in some way. Uh, hope you learned something. If uh, you enjoy either something physically about me or my voice or my SQL Server abilities, then uh, I would encourage you to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, if not, well, have a, have, a, have a great weekend. You find folks working on the DOP feedback feature? Well, you, 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 you can do a serial plan. You can, do, you can assign a single thread to a query with a parallel plan. It does not require a recompile. 
You can do it. I have faith in you. I haven't met you. New crop of summer interns. But I have faith in you. You can do it. You fix, generate series. You can do anything. All right. Cool. Thanks for watching.